So have you all probably heard or seen by now, DVD's released its latest public test build and it's full of improvements like map updates, quality of life improvements, perk changes, and of course, three new characters, two new survivors, and a bad guy. The characters are all unlicensed and come with brand new perks and powers, so let's take a look at those first before getting into the rest of the updates on the PTB. First up is the brand new bad guy, the Skull Merchant. Now I know her design isn't quite what the community wanted when the trailer first dropped. She's not much of a cyborg as she is a girl with a mask, but I was surprised by how intimidating she looked in-game. Where are you going though? Oh shit, here she comes. Hide, 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 hide. Ooh. Her power is called Eye in the Sky. She starts the trial with four drones and she can place those drones around the map. After a short boot up period, each drone creates a detection mode around itself. The Skull Merchant gains the undetectable status when within this detection zone. When survivors are within the detection zone, they gain lock-on progress. The Skull Merchant can see the location of the survivors on our radar when they are within the detection zone. If a survivor stays within the detection zone for too long, they will become exposed, and the Skull Merchant will gain killer instinct on us while they are in the detection zone. If no survivors enter the detection zone, the drone will enter scouting mode, where it begins sweeping the area looking for a survivor. If it detects one, it will re-enter active mode. Survivors can interact with the drone to disable it. The disable process is a small puzzle, and if they succeed, the drone will return to the Skull Merchant, and the survivor will be stuck with a claw trap. Claw trapped survivors are trackable by the Skull Merchant. Now let's take a look at her perks. Her first perk is Thwack. After hooking a survivor, the next breakable wall or pallet you break will make survivors within 32 meters scream and reveal their aura for 4 seconds. It's active for the next 75 seconds after the survivor is hooked. This is kind of like the reverse of the perk alert, and I think it's a cool aura reading perk that helps the bad guys start another chase instead of camp a hook. Her next perk is Leverage. Each time you hook a survivor, gain one token, up to 10. When you hook a survivor, this perk activates. For each token, reduces the speed at which survivors heal by 5 seconds for 30 seconds. So by the 10th hook, survivors healing speed will be reduced by 50% for the 30 seconds after the hook occurs. Her last perk is Game Afoot. While you are chasing the obsession, this perk activates. Damaging generators and breaking walls or pallets gives you a 5% haste status for 10 seconds. Whenever you hit the survivor with the total most time in chase with a basic attack, they become the obsession. I think this perk has a lot of potential because it will mitigate the time you spent breaking the pallet or kicking the gen in a chase. Overall, I think her power is interesting, but it's a little bit difficult to get a ton of value out of. You're almost forced to put the drones around generators in order to get any value out of them. And even then, survivors can fairly easily avoid the drones or disable them entirely in order to get to work on a gen. In fact, when a drone is in scouting mode, a survivor can run straight through the drone's area without activating the drone, as long as the survivor avoids the line of sight of the drone's two sensors. One thing she can't use her power to do is to camp a hook. No drones are allowed to be near the hook, and if a drone is currently out near where a survivor is hooked, the drone will automatically be returned to the Skull Merchant. The drones are allowed to be placed near exit gates, though. So her power is relatively strong in the end game when you need to figure out which gate the survivors are going to. Now let's take a look at the new survivors. According to their backstory, the new survivors are both brother and sister from Brazil, and the entity caught them while they are running from the Skull Merchant. These survivors actually have voice lines and talk to each other in Portuguese if they are both in the lobby together. It's pretty cool. Ah, oi. Tudo bem? Let's take a look at Talita's perks first. Her first perk is Friendly Competition. Whenever you finish repairing a generator with at least one other survivor, this perk activates. You and other survivors who finish repairing the generator with you get a 5% increased repair progress speed for 75 seconds. Important to note that you don't need to work on the same generator to get the 5% increased repair speed. Once you finish repairing a gen together, you both can run in different generators and get the value out of the perk. Her next perk is Teamwork, Power of 2. Whenever you finish healing another survivor, you both move 5% faster as long as you stay within 12 meters of the survivor you healed, or until one of you loses a health state. It can only trigger once every 140 seconds. To me, this just seems like an alternate form of blood pack, and maybe they can be stacked together to get even more speed. Her last perk is Cut Loose. After performing a rush vault in a chase, this perk activates. While this perk is active, your rush vaults are silent for up to 6 seconds, and successfully performing a rush vault during this time resets the timer. This perk has a 45 second cooldown. 
I like this one a lot because you can take advantage of a jungle gym and keep vaulting windows or pallets without having to worry about being heard by the bad guy. Keep in mind though that this perk doesn't work when vaulting into a locker. <laughs> that wasn't silent. <laughs> <laughs> now for Renato's perks. His first one is Blood Brush. This perk activates once you're one hook away from instant death. While healthy, running, and suffering from exhaustion, press the active ability button to lose a health state and recover from exhaustion instantly and gain the broken status effect for 20 seconds. You're automatically healed from injured to healthy after 20 seconds. Now this perk has a ton of potential around endgame. You have to be exhausted and healthy, so it most likely won't work with Dead Hard, which means survivors might be tempted to run other exhaustion perks more often. His second perk is Teamwork, Collective Stealth. Whenever another survivor finishes healing you, you both leave no scratch marks as long as you stay within 12 meters of the survivor who healed you, or until one of you loses a health state. It can only trigger once every 140 seconds. His last perk is Background Player. After you unhook another survivor, break into a sprint at 150% of your normal running speed for 6 seconds and gain exhaustion. This perk causes exhaustion for 40 seconds. I'm personally not a huge fan of this one. The 6 second speed boost does give you a ton of distance, but I don't see how this would be very useful. Since you're running away, the bad guy will be more incentivized to tunnel the recently unhooked survivor, which is probably not ideal for your team as a whole. Playing with these new survivor perks was really interesting. Teamwork perks combined with friendly competition help this complete generator super fast, faster than the 75 seconds it took for friendly competition to deactivate. I found Blood Rush to be super helpful when I paired it up with Lythe or Sprint Burst, but overall, it's a one-time use perk that will probably have limited effective uses overall. Cut Loose is actually a really effective perk for when you're being chased. Being able to fast vault windows and pallets silently while in chase helped me lose the bad guys so much easier. Pairing this perk with Quick and Quiet and Dance with me and Maybe even Deception would be a really effective in Chase. Now let's talk about some of the other changes in the PTD. Maybe most prominently, outside of the new survivors, are the visual updates to the maps, Shelter Woods, Mother's Dwelling, and Temple of Purgation. These new maps look incredible visually, and I hope to see them update more maps with these types of visual updates in the future more often. Some other changes in the PTD include quality of life changes like map repeat prevention. Essentially, the chances of getting the same map twice in a row now will be reduced to near zero, although this doesn't affect map offerings. It will also make sure that there's a very low chance that you'll be sent to a map you recently played on. It's not specific on how many games ago count as recent, but anyone who's played on the same map multiple times in a row will be happy about this change regardless. Bots are now able to be equipped with perks, items, and add-ons in custom matches. This is actually a really big change, especially for newer players who are still trying to get the hang of how the game works. The bots are actually pretty effective at using their perks too, although sometimes they're a little too focused on getting value out of their perk. Overall, they're pretty good competition for if you want to try out a new character or perk you haven't used before. They can be extremely accurate when hitting their dead heart. Oh, she has dead heart! <laughs> Finally, there's the perk changes. Now, only two changes are currently live on the PTV, and people have mixed feelings about them. The first perk that's been changed is Any Means Necessary. This perk allows you to see the aura of drop pallets and pick any drop pallets back up. This perk used to have a cooldown of 60 seconds, but now it doesn't have any cooldown at all. Now before you get too excited, you can't use Any Means Necessary to block a bad guy from breaking a pallet. The break pallet animation will override Any Means Necessary, so it's probably best you don't stick around once you drop that pallet. Now for the most controversial change, Eruption. Previously, Eruption would activate on a gen that you kicked after downing a survivor. Eruption would cause the affected generator to instantly lose 10% progress and begin regressing. And any survivor working on that generator will scream and suffer from the incapacitated status effect for 25 seconds. In the PTB, Eruption received a huge nerf. Now instead of losing 10% total gen progress, the gen will lose 10% of current repair progress. Additionally, survivors working on the gem will no longer suffer from incapacitated, and instead, their aura will be shown to the bad guy for 12 seconds. Personally, I think this nerf is a bit too much, and that's coming from a survivor main. I think if they just switched out the incapacitated status effect for an effect where the entity blocks the gen for 25 seconds instead, everybody would be happy. But in its current state on the PTB, it seems Eruption's time as a meta perk is coming to an end. Well, that's all the major changes there are on DVD's latest PTV. 
I'll leave a link down below to the full patch notes so you can read about some of the smaller changes I didn't have time to mention. If you enjoy this review of the PTB, don't forget to click the like button because it really helps out with the channel. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. And that's it. So I'll see you all next time. Thank you for being my loyal subject. You're free to go.